የምንለው this lesson is about obstructive sleep apnea in childhood or osa obstructive sleep apnea is a medical condition in which children have difficult breathing when they are asleep the obstruction causes these victims to repeatedly stop breathing during their sleep often for 10 seconds or more and sometimes even for a minute or longer during sleep muscles around the airway relax causing the throat and the upper airway to narrow this leads to snoring but can also lead to airway being blocked so obstructive sleep apnea is a disorder of breathing during sleep that causes prolonged partial upper airway obstruction and or intermittent complete obstruction that disrupts gas exchange and the sleep pattern trying to breathe against the blocked airway causes oxygen levels to fall and the carbon dioxide to rise the blockage tends to be intermittent because the brain triggers a movement or awakening that reopens the airway this brief awakening can significantly disrupt sleep and children who suffer from moderate to severe obstructive sleep apnea showed evidence of widespread brain cell damage this problem affects 2 to 5 percent of all children the peak age group to have obstructive sleep apnea is from 2 to 8 years of age problems that obstructive sleep apnea can cause include impact on daytime learning behavior and the cardiovascular health in severe cases this problem can cause cold pulmonary and the failure to thrive in school age children obesity is also a risk factor as the prevalence of pediatric obesity rises nowadays the rate of childhood osa is increasing when we see the cause of childhood obstructive sleep apnea the most common cause of childhood osa is adenotonsillar enlargement or adenotonsillar hypertrophy tonsils and adenoids grow most quickly in the preschool years sometimes outstripping the growth of bony pharynx and leading to airway obstruction because of this rapid growth of tonsils and adenoids during young age that is why osa is common from 2 to 8 years of age other risk factors include obesity having allergic granites underlying medical conditions that cause low muscle tone such as cerebral palsy abnormal craniofacial structures with small airway size such as down syndrome or achondroplasia when we see the signs and the symptoms regular snoring and the noisy breathing during sleep this snoring might be benign in some cases but can also be signs of significant osa increased work of breathing during sleep pauses in breathing during sleep choking gasping or snorting during sleep restless sleep increased sweating during sleep unusual sleep position such as hyper extended head postures or needing to be propped up high or pillows mouse breathing during the daytime are some of the symptoms so daytime symptoms include early morning headache daytime sleepiness poor concentration irritability falling asleep during routine activities due to lack of uh, adequate sleep during night time in addition morning headache tiredness or walking despite what seems like adequate sleep time and the difficult paying attention behavioral problems and the learning difficulties are there during night time as i have said loud persistent snoring witness the pause in breathing by family frequent visits to bathroom choking or gasping for air and the restless sleep are there if symptoms of osa are present diagnostic testing is done in all sleep laboratory using overnight polysomnography in addition those who are at high risk of having osa should be screened intermittently those high risk populations include those who have significant obesity down syndrome craniofacial abnormalities history of prematurity prader willi syndrome a chondroplasia and the like should be checked intermittently for having osa by polysomnography despite absence of the symptoms
Overnight polysomnography is the gold standard for diagnosing of obstructive sleep apnea. Varietous component of sleep disorder can be measured, and the patient stays overnight at sleep center, most of which have video monitoring. This allows for any troubleshooting, such as disconnected lifts, but allows assessment of titration with CPAP. There are diagnostic criteria for pediatric OSA. Those are criteria A and B. Those criteria A and B must be present. Criteria A is the presence of one or more of the following. Snoring. Lever, paradoxical or obstructed breathing during sleep. Sleepiness, hyperactivity. Behavioral problems or learning problems. Whereas the second one of the B's, polysomnography, which demonstrates characteristics of OSA. So this criteria A and B must be met to diagnose OSA in pediatrics. We can also grade the severity of the obstructive sleep apnea based on apnea, hypoapnea index on polysomnography. In children, we say mild if it is between 1 to 5, moderate from 5 to 10, and greater than 10 severe. Regarding treatment, treatment varies depending on the cause and the severity of the OSA. Children with large adenoid and tonsil should be sent for tonsillectomy and adenoidectomy. This procedure is successful in treating OSA in 80 to 90% of children. Children who are obese would benefit from exercise and the weight management program. And the children with chronic nasal allergy may try a mix of different medications such as topical steroid spray. Children with persistent OSA despite other treatment can be treated with CPAP, continuous positive airway pressure, oxygen administration. This continuous positive airway pressure have a positive airway pressure that inhibits the closure of airway during breathing. Consequence of untreated obstructive sleep apnea include failure to try in neurosis, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, behavioral problems, poor academic performance, and heart failure. So we should have to prevent those complications by treating and the diagnosing obstructive sleep apnea early. This is all about obstructive sleep apnea in children. Thank you for watching.